So there are two types of tomato plants as far as I'm concerned. Determinant, just like the ones you see right here. And indeterminate, which are the ones you see right here. Typically, they need to be trellised because they grow until the end of the season. They're much taller than determinate tomatoes, which means you need to prune them differently than determinate tomatoes. I've received a lot of questions lately, how I prune my tomatoes, whether I prune them at all, why I prune my tomatoes. We're gonna to cover that in today's video, so don't go anywhere. So when it comes to determinate tomatoes, I mentioned before in previous videos that we like to use tomato cages, the large tomato cages. These are typically for tomatoes like Roma tomatoes that we use for canning. That's what these tomatoes are right here. In this example, we have five of them. We've got some Roma tomatoes in a different part of the garden and a different part of the garden as well. But these are the five that I can give you that are the best example. In my opinion, you should never prune determinate tomatoes. Determinate tomatoes basically grow up in a bush-like fashion. They grow out to the sides, kind of like a bush, and they produce flowers, which produce fruit, and then they're done. They have a determined height and a determined amount of fruit that they produce. That's why they're called determinate tomatoes. You do not want to prune determinate tomatoes because all the vines and branches that the plant creates has potential for producing fruit. I made this mistake before on some of these types of tomato plants like the Romas and so on, and I ended up actually not getting a lot of fruit. It probably cut the production down almost as much as half because half the plant was almost missing. It was supposed to bush out and be really full, and it ended up not really doing that because I cut so much of the plant off thinking that you need to prune it in order to get more fruit on determinate tomato plants. That was a big mistake. Let's take a closer look here. This year, our Roma tomatoes did really well. So I'm gonna bring you in nice and close so you can see how well these things have done. Don't mind seeing this type of stuff on your tomatoes, especially toward the end of the season. That's when this video is being shot. It's going on September. That for us in Wisconsin is kind of the season dwindling down. That's blight. That's something that I can explain in another video or you can look up on your own. Most tomato plants that we've had end up getting blight, especially towards the end of the season. So look past that. And these tomato plants have done super well. This is a huge Roma tomato right here. If you compare them to the ones that you would typically purchase in the store. But if I back up here, give you a bigger view, you can see that I've got tomato plant one right here. It's hard because they've done so well, they've kind of grown close together. Two, three, four, and five. They kind of make a zigzag pattern that allows them to grow out a little bit more and to have a little bit more space. If we look over here, maybe it's a better look at how everything looks as far as the Roma tomato plants are concerned on these determinant tomato plants. This is as tall as they get. Early in the video, I said never ever prune determinant tomato plants. In my opinion, that's my recommendation to you. However, there is one time I would suggest, I would highly suggest you prune determinate tomato plants. Let me show you where I prune these plants and why. You wanna make sure that you're trimming away these bottom vines and branches and leaves so that they're not touching the soil. Soil often carries diseases and you wanna avoid any chance of the soil touching the plant just in case it has a disease so it doesn't pass it on to the plant itself. Okay, I need to get out of the sun. I am dying, so bear with me here. Let's go in the shade so I can explain how this all works. So now we get to talk about indeterminate tomatoes. And there's a big difference. If I would have known this years ago, I would have had so much better success growing tomatoes, but I didn't. I thought they were all the same. They're definitely not. So we talked about determinate tomatoes being bushy. They grow to a certain size. They typically only have a certain amount of fruit they're capable of producing and so on, and then they die. Well, indeterminate tomatoes are kind of the opposite, where as long as they're healthy, disease-free, pest-free, and there's no frost, meaning at the end of the season, it really doesn't happen perhaps in warmer climates, they're just gonna keep growing and growing and growing. Now behind me over here, you're gonna see that there are tons of things going on. I talked about this in a previous video. It's up here if you want to watch it next, or I can also put it down in the description for you. I go into more detail about that in my garden tour. However, these are not the only things growing in here are these indeterminate tomatoes. There are many indeterminate tomatoes that I'll show you in a little bit, but we've got other things like butternut squash, onions, potatoes, so on and so forth. But let's just focus on the tomatoes for now. When you see this behind me right here, this big jungle thing I created with trellises and everything, you're gonna see that that's what indeterminate tomatoes need. They need some kind of trellising system, and there are a million videos like that out on YouTube. I suggest you check them out because they're gonna keep growing 
until the season ends, especially here in Wisconsin where our last frost date happens quite a bit faster than most places. So once that frost date comes, the tomato is done. And so you need to prune the tomatoes to make sure they can live as long as they possibly can in order to get the most fruit from an indeterminate tomato. In my experience, now you may have experienced something different and that's fine, but in my experience, the best way to get the most production, the most fruit from your indeterminate tomatoes, whether they're Romas or slicers or whatever, is to make sure you prune them to having only one stalk. And this can get away from you really, really quickly if you don't pay attention. So as you can see, this is being trellised by this wooden post. Again, I talked about that in a different video. I believe these kind are beefsteak. Okay, so that's a beefsteak tomato. Typical slicer, gets relatively big as you can see. And that's gonna grow up this post all the way up to the top up there. And it's hard to see because there's so many other things I'm growing here. My point is they've got one stalk right here. It's gonna grow up, it's relatively thick, it's doing really well, it's a nice, healthy, dark green plant. It's gonna grow all the way up, and I'm simply just trellising it up here with this garden jute twine that decomposes. And I just keep that going all the way up to the top where it kind of ends up there. Similarly to the determinant type of tomatoes, I trimmed off the bottom branches here, or vines, or whatever you wanna call them, so that they would not touch the ground, even though I do use leaf mulch on my beds. I trim those off, then after that, I let it go all the way up, training it up using one main stem. So the other type of pruning I like to do on indeterminate tomato plants is to top them off. I created a short on my channel, I believe that was like a week ago, talking about why I top off indeterminate tomato plants, but to be really quick, if they just keep going and going and going and going and going, they're eventually gonna flop over, especially in longer growing seasons. So to prevent them from flopping over when they get to the top of your trellis, like many of these did behind me, I've already topped off all these, these ones you see behind me here, and you cut them off so they don't flop over. The other reason is because they're gonna keep putting energy into the plant growing as tall as it possibly can. You wanna prevent that because you want the energy to be focused more on the plant producing fruit that's already being established on the plant. Let's jump in there and I'll show you what I mean. So if we use this beefsteak tomato plant as an example again, these tomatoes need to be harvested real quick. You can see they're getting to the point where they need to be picked. These tomatoes are still green over here. If you cut off the top of the tomato plant, which at some point in time was up here, I can't even find it now, it's going to put more energy into ripening the tomatoes that are already on the plant instead of trying to produce more flowers and get those tomatoes good and ripe and red by the end of the growing season. So let's do a quick recap here. Determined tomatoes, bush-like, have a determined height, have a determined set of flowers and fruit that's capable of producing. Those are great for the canning types because a lot of times there's a lot of fruit that comes in to ripen at the same time. Therefore, you can take a lot off the plant, bring them in, do a canning session, maybe repeat the process a week later using the same plant. A lot of people who do canning like determinant tomatoes because of that. They're very predictable when they're going to be ripe so you can can them. When do you actually prune determinate tomatoes? Well, you don't. You wanna leave on all of the suckers. You wanna leave on all of the branches, all the vines, whatever you call these things. However, you do want to prune the bottom leaves if they're touching the soil or even the mulch, and you do wanna prune away any of the little branches on the bottom, like we talked about earlier, to prevent diseases from affecting the plants. When it comes to indeterminate tomatoes, like these really tall ones behind me that just keep going and going, you wanna prune them to a single stalk as they start growing up. Then you wanna make sure the bottom branches are not touching the soil or the leaves, just like on the determinate plants. The last thing you wanna do when it comes to pruning indeterminate plants, the ones that keep growing until they die, is top them off on the very top so it produces more energy and puts more energy into the tomatoes and the rest of the plant that's already being established so that you can get some fruit before the last frost. It's really not fun when you've got a tomato plant with tons and tons of big tomatoes that are super green and not ripe, stuck on the plant, and then tomorrow you're expected to have frost. It's always better to ripen fruit on the plant. Tomatoes taste so much better when they turn a nice deep red or whatever color they're supposed to be after they've been in the plant for a really long time. Even when you take them off and they're orange, and one is red, 
taste them. You're going to notice a difference. The red one's going to taste better. It's going to be sweeter. It's going to have a much nice, richer flavor in comparison to the orange tomato that is only a couple days away from being red like the one you just picked. This is not a gardening channel. This is a lifestyle of simplifying your life to increase its quality, to be as self-reliant as possible, and to learn more and more through the process. It's all part of the fun. If you'd like to learn more about simplifying your life to increase its quality, click on this video right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, be a part of this journey with us, we'd certainly appreciate it. Thanks for watching.